The 90s were looking like an optimistic turning point for Finnish football. During the 1998 World Cup qualifiers, it just seemed to be written in the stars for Finland to qualify for their first major tournament. Their greatest ever player, Yari Litmanen, had just come off a fantastic year for Ajax and was even top scorer with 9 goals in the 1995-96 Champions League. He was at his peak and one of the finest attacking midfielders in the world. Not only that, Finland in 1996 appointed Richard Moller Nielsen, the same coach who led Denmark to their unlikely Euro 90 2 title. Finland with these new assets and an up-and-coming generation were going to finally qualify for their very first major tournament. The road to World Cup 1998 was quite bumpy with opening losses to Hungary and Budapest in Switzerland and Helsinki, but two victories against Azerbaijan and a draw against Norway had Finland back on track. Unfortunately, Finland couldn't get the double as Norway demolished them 4-0. Even with three losses in their campaign already, the second place playoff position was very much still up for grabs. Later, Finland defeated Switzerland 2-1 away from home and set up the ultimate scenario that could see the Finns finally overcome their drought. With one match remaining, Finland were up against Hungary. The third place Finns were just one point behind the Magyars. They were in a dream must-win scenario that could see them steal the playoff spot away from the Hungarians. A little over an hour into the match, Finland broke the deadlock with a brilliantly taken corner resulting in a goal headed home by forward Antti Sumiala. This was it. After 60 years of failure, Finland were one step closer in the form of a two-legged playoff tie that could send them to their very first major tournament. Founded in 1907 while still part of the Russian Empire, the Finnish FA have been a member of FIFA since 1908. They played their very first match in 1911 against Sweden in a 5-2 loss at home. Just a year later, the Finns participated in the 1912 Stockholm Olympics. They defeated Italy, the Russian Empire, but lost in a bronze medal match against the Dutch. And this would be about the only highlight the Finnish would have in the 20th century. The Finnish Civil War of 1918 did not help whatsoever in the progress of Finnish football. The nation's sports movement was divided into the right-wing Finnish Gymnastics, aka the SVUL, and the left-wing Finnish Workers Sports Federation, aka the TUL. The Finnish FA were a part of the right-wing SVUL, and for the next 20 years, the Finland national team would only select FA members. This resulted in many top footballers defecting from the left-wing TUL and joining the FA to become eligible for the national team. By 1936, the team was composed of eight former TUL players. During this period, Finland also participated in their first ever World Cup qualifier in 1937. They didn't win a single qualifying match until 1965. By 1939, players from TUL were now selected into the Finnish national team. The following year, the Finnish also suffered their worst defeat. Against, uh... Yeah. By 1956, Finland's two associations finally merged into one official. Merging was the great step forward, but the Finnish national team were about 10 steps behind everyone else. Don't say it! Don't you say it! I left! Come on! They did participate in their very first European Championship qualifier in 1966, though. They didn't win a single qualifying match until 1978. They also lost 8-1 to Greece that same year. But in the same qualification campaign, Finland were just one point within qualifying for Euro 1980. And just a couple years later, Finland were just two points short of a World Cup 1986 berth. Finland's caliber of players in the 2000s was by far the most talented the nation's ever seen. Many believed that this new generation could paint over all the miserable history and achieve qualification finally. You had players like Hart's goalkeeper Antti Niemi. He's from Finland. He's what? He's Finnish, isn't he? He's not Finnish. Another keeper in Yusi Jaskalainen, defenders Hanu Tienen and Demu Tanyo. There's teenage striker Mikael Forsel, who would become the sixth most capped player and the third highest goal scorer for Finland. Sani Hupia, whose defensive partnership with Jamie Carragher would soon help Liverpool in their 2004 05 Champions League winning campaign. And of course, Yari Litmanen, who, although was dubbed Man of Glass due to how terribly injury prone he was, could still make an impact due to his willpower to never give up. Many English supporters remember the 2002 qualifier 
sacrificed for this legendary moment. For Finnish fans, it was a sign of a new hope. In a group consisting of England and Germany, they finished third with 12 points. They earned a draw against the eventual finalists, and another against the English at home. They also got some needed revenge, dismantling Greece 5-1 in Helsinki. They are the only team not to lose at home in their group. Hopes were high going into the Euro 2004 qualifying campaign. Finland beat Norway, Belgium, and even Portugal in some friendlies prior. But in qualifiers, it was a completely different story. Losses to Wales early on, Yugoslavia, and Italy twice left Finland in a hole they'd never recover from. They end up fourth with 10 points. 2006 World Cup qualifying wasn't anything different for Finland. They finished fourth and couldn't register a single point against the eventual top three. A protest was actually held by Finnish football supporters against head coach Antti Murinen, who had been at the helm since the new millennium. Obviously, the fans had had enough of his failure to capitalize on the golden generation Finland were seeing slowly slip out of their grasp. Lord, I'm gonna ask you the same question that I asked. It's time to go! After a 4-0 defeat against the Netherlands, the Finnish FA sacked Murinen in June of 2005. Soon after, Roy Hodgson was announced new Finland coach in 2006. This was the same year Hard Rock Hallelujah won Eurovision, so maybe this was a sign of better things to come. Let's set one thing straight. Euro 2008 qualification was stupid and dumb. Instead of your normal 5 to 6 teams in each group with a playoff system, there were 7 to 8 teams in each group with no playoff system. Anyways, the Hukayat, under their new Hukayat looking head coach, went unbeaten in their first five matches, including a one-all draw against Portugal. But then Finland had a blip in their campaign, losing shockingly to Azerbaijan in Baku 1-0, and then the very next match lost to Serbia 2-0. But not this time, fellas, said Roy Hodgson maybe. The Finns revived the campaign, got things back on track, and defeated Belgium in the infamous match that saw an owl delay the game for six minutes. Finland then beat Kazakhstan 2-1. This was it. Finland were going to finally do it. This was the Golden Generation's last chance to make it happen, and they weren't going to let it slip. And then three goalless draws later, and Finland found themselves in a must-win situation. Did I mention this time it was Portugal they had to beat? Finland did all they could, even suppressing the threats of Nuno Gomes and some random Portuguese star no one would care about in a decade's time. But they just couldn't produce any goals. And again, a draw would stop Finland in its tracks with a quest of qualification. Hodgson, after failing to qualify, stepped down, and Scotsman Stuart Baxter took over. 2010 World Cup qualifying showed promise, with Finland drawing 3 all against an emerging squad of talent and efficiency ready to burst on the scene for Germany. But then Finland drew against Liechtenstein. You know, the the only team that San Marino has beaten. Needless to say, Finland failed to qualify for World Cup 2010 as well. Stuart Baxter was let off in November 2010, and in came Miksu Batalainen. Batalainen's first qualification campaign was Euro 2012 and Finland failed to qualify again. Behind the scenes though, something was cooking up in the talent pot for Finland. Former defender with 59 Finnish caps and current math and PE teacher Marku Kanerva guided Finland to the 2009 UEFA U21 Championship. Sure, they may have lost all three matches, but many of those same players now were representing Finland at senior level, including young striker and soon-to-be party starter Teemu Puki. Vatalainen was still manning the ship into 2014 World Cup qualifying, and already it wasn't looking promising as France and Spain were both in their group. The Hukayat finished third, scoring just five goals the entire campaign, but one of those goals was an iconic moment for the finish. In March 2013, during a qualifier in Gijon, Spain, 23-year-old Teemu Puki scored a game-tying goal against the reigning champions. This was Puki's fifth goal for the national team. Time for Euro 2016 qualifiers, and hey, isn't that Group F? Where have I seen this before? Please watch this video, I really worked hard on it. Miksu Patelainen was sacked after he just couldn't get Finland on their feet. And you remember that math and PE teacher we were talking about earlier? Well, he's the new caretaker for a bit. In his very first match, Kanerva snatched a 1-0 win against Greece. Of course, this wasn't enough to dig Finland out as they finished fourth. Into the next campaign, Finland decided they wanted more experience in their search for a major tournament berth. In 2016, the Finnish FA appointed Hans Bach. What an awful decision that was. During Bach's tenure, Finland lost 9 of its 11 matches, failing to win a single game. Hell, to make things worse, 
Bach drew against brand new member of FIFA, Kosovo. After a 1-0 loss to Ukraine in Odessa on November 12, 2016, the red skies of hell were finally lifted over the heads of miserable Finnish fans as Bach was sacked. Marku Kaneva was back at the helm, and even though Finland were officially eliminated two matches later, he led the Hukayat to an upset victory against Iceland in 2017, and then drew against both Turkey and eventual World Cup 2018 finalist Croatia. Hey Finnish FA, maybe you should keep this guy. <laughs> Following the victory against Iceland, Finland in the next 16 matches only lost 3 times between September 2017 and November 2018. Though momentum from a promotion to League B in the tournament absolutely no one asked for, oh wait sorry I meant the UEFA Nations League, had quite the morale boost going into the Euro 2020 qualifying campaign. And besides a strong Italian side, the rest of their group consisted of Greece, Bosnia, Armenia, and Liechtenstein. And this time, Marku Kaneva was staying for good. The way he approaches the game using the fusion of his footballing and teaching experience made him the absolute right man for the job. Former Finland international Juna Reini said this about Kaneva regarding the way he discussed plans and tactics. He doesn't say it in a way that annoys you. He doesn't say it in an arrogant way. He says it in a way that makes you think, okay, the big man is talking, we need to listen. Every time he speaks, he has a point. Kaneva picked players according to individual stats rather than a pre-existing style and always encouraged players to take greater risks. That way they could learn more about the game and learn to take responsibility. In no way was this a Finnish side stacked in star power like generations past, but the bond between Kaneva and his players made the team stronger than any star-studded Finnish side there ever was. This Finnish side was made up of bright, youthful energy mixed with older experienced players stepping up to play some of their best games for the national team. This was also a side that was very familiar with one another as they had been playing together for years now. Kanerva's approach was based on hard work and a strong defensive shape, and it showed as Finland only conceded 10 goals with 4 being against Italy. But as we've seen in Finland's past, defense can only take you so far. I think you may know where I'm going with this. Teemu Puki scored 7 goals in 8 matches. It was like Finland had finally discovered the missing piece, one that has haunted the national team for years. Goal production. After a win against Armenia in mid-October, Finland needed just one more win to lock themselves into Euro 2020. What was in front of them this time? Liechtenstein. Easy dubs tonight, no big deal. November 15th, 2019. An attendance of nearly 10,000 were ready to finally witness and experience pure elation after generations filled with heartbreak, misery, and pain. This was it. Finland's best chance to finally end their drought. Early into the match, Teemu Puki drove towards the box and played in Jas Tuominen to open the scoring. Then in the second half, with Finland holding onto a 1-0 lead, Teemu Puki scored a penalty. It was 2-0 and now it was really starting to set in. Puki then capped off his fantastic display with yet another goal. The score was now completely out of reach for their opponents. Then the whistle blew. Finland was officially qualified for Euro 2020. After over 80 years of trying and failing, Finland qualified for a major tournament. Generation upon generation had experienced misery in one way or another, and here each and every one of them were reduced to tears of happiness and relief. A whole nation in pure jubilation. So far as of the time of this being written, Finland have won their very first major tournament match against Denmark, and then followed by that they lost 1-0 to Russia. But there is still a very good chance of them advancing to the knockout stage. Their defensive organization have no doubt been an incredibly important part of their success. And hopefully against the Red Devils, the Belgium attack won't completely bite out a chunk of that goal differential. But I do sincerely believe that Finland can very much advance to the next round. Here's to hoping that age as well, otherwise, oh man, that would not be a good look. But that was basically 80 years of Finland's journey to finally qualifying for their very first major tournament. When I first started researching this project, I didn't really think too much of it, but as I kept reading through all of the qualification campaigns, man, you Finnish supporters have really gone through a lot. But what do you guys think about the story? And if you have any other stories that are similar to this, leave them down in the comments below and maybe I'll make a video about it. If you want some video updates, definitely follow my Twitter. I'd love to grow my TikTok as well, so follow that too. Uh, Instagram's just kind of optional and Twitch, uh, at this point, like I'll try and stream. It's very difficult with how all these videos just take quite a bit. Be sure to join the Discord as well if you haven't already. There's a wide open community just waiting to welcome you in. But until next time, 
I'll see you guys.